Sure, all right. Well, he never leaves. He just sits there sort of staring out of the window most of the time. Now I ask you, a man of his age who stares. Are you a bill collector? No, I'm a lawyer. That's what they all say. They think they throw a scare into us, I guess. <laughs> well, he's a weird one, that fella. Really? Him and his thousand dollar bill. Thousand dollar bill. Framed like a picture and a setting on the table. And him without enough money to eat on. Just a second. Come in. Mr. Shaw. The last time I saw you, I, uh, I was representing some real estate people. That uh, Pasadena deal, remember? Well, have you had your breakfast? No, not yet. I was just going out for it. Always have a cup of coffee here first. It, uh, it helps. Helps what? Your pride? Oh, come now, Shaw. You're not the first man who lost his shirt. I, I don't mean that literally, of course. Come on, let's have some breakfast. Be my guest. Why? What was that? What are you trying to sell me? Success, my boy. Bigger than you ever had before. I have a million dollars behind Shaw Incorporated. I had a partner once used to talk like you. He wound up robbing me blind. Partner in Shaw Incorporated? That's right. He was a gambler, wasn't he? Yeah. He gambled away $37,000. Not a bad fellow, though, I hear. No. Just a bad poker player. $37,000. That isn't all the money in the world. No. But it was all I had. Not quite all. Look. All I ever wanted was good friends, good home, a good business. When I lost the business, I lost the home and the friends. Isn't that the usual? No, I don't mean it that way. All my partner and I put in Shaw Incorporated was 10,000 bucks. The rest was their money, friends' money. Life savings, most of it, wiped out. May, uh, may I ask you a question? Sure, you will anyway. Why? As long as I can keep from spending it, I'll get going again. You actually believe that? I sure do. And when you get going again, you'll pay back every cent of all your friends' money. That sounds pretty noble, doesn't it? I don't know that my clients will like that. Would you consider going into bankruptcy, wiping out all your debts and starting all over again afresh? No, no, I guess not. You could have done that months ago. You're not noble, my boy. You're a hardhead. Nobody's ever going to teach you anything except yourself. Now, come on, let's get out of here and go and get some breakfast. Wait till I wash. OK. It's down the hall. Shaw. That was a cynical thing to do. Safe, too.
I'm Edward Shaw. Mr. Pearson phoned and made an appointment for me. Mr. Hillman's not home. With Mrs. Hillman. What are you selling? Nothing. Mrs. Hillman told Mr. Pearson I should come right out. Mrs. Hillman's in the pool. Well, where would that be, in the middle of the six-car garage? Go around the back, that way. The pool is just the other side of the guest house. You better call out when you get to the guest house. Sometimes she swims in the nude. Don't worry about it. So do I. You're Edward Shaw, aren't you? Uh-huh. I'm Mrs. Hillman. Hey, did you bring your pretty thousand-dollar bill? Word gets around. No, I left it at Pearson's office. Oh, what a shame. Hey, do you like our lovely pool? Looks all right from here. Didn't Mabel tell you to call out when you got to the guest house? Uh-huh. I didn't hear you call. No need to. I peeked first instead. You were expecting company. I didn't expect to find you unprepared. That'll be enough, Mr. Shaw. Enough of what? I invited you out here just to discuss business. Now, where were we? About to talk business, according to you. Do you want a drink first? Thanks, yes. Help yourself. I'll just have a Coke, if you don't mind. My husband doesn't like me to drink during the day. He thinks it's a bad habit to get into. Alcohol, I mean. I'm alone most of the time. He travels a lot. He thinks I should have a business to occupy me. Thanks. Do you know anything about the building business? I know real estate. I ought to. I used to sell it before I was married. How long have you been married? Six years. Long years? Short, happy years, Mr. Shaw. Uh-huh. Well, the building business is a little different from real estate, you know. Not so different. Let's go. I want to handle the real estate. I want to buy up lots of beautiful California property. Then you build your little houses on it. <clears throat> I sell the houses and the property. Well, how can we miss? You handle the real estate end? Yes. And what part of the business does your husband figure to handle? My husband? Not mine, I hope. My husband doesn't figure to handle anything. You mean he just puts up the money and then sits back with a little prayer each night that it'll come back? Yeah, he just puts up the money. Then it'll be just you and me. Yes. Don't you think you'd like that? Well, it sounds like it might work out. But you're not too sure. Well, I'll have to chase around the mulberry bush a few times. Uh, how much money? Mr. Pearson told you, half a million. 50,000 to start with and 50,000 every three months. Just to keep you from getting lonely, huh? My happiness means a great deal to my husband. I'm sure it does. But what I'm not sure of is who's nuts, him, you, or me. Or maybe it's Pearson. Did he recommend that you buy in with me? No, it was our idea. How come? I like your houses. Where did you see my houses? Pasadena, you sold quite a few there, didn't you? Yeah, a dozen or so. My cousin lives in one, Cousin Evie. She swears by it. I think it's wonderful. Hand me that towel over there, will you? The top gets so uncomfortable when it's damp. There, that's better. Now, what were we talking about? I, uh, I can't imagine why, but somehow it slipped my mind. You mind if I cool this off a little? I mean, brace it up? I told you before, help yourself. Oh, there's a, a little matter of some money the company owes. I've managed to pay off some of it. It stands out about 30,000. Mr. Pearson told me. Owed to some friends of yours? Uh-huh. Male or female friends? Both. Why? I just wondered. And you insist on paying them off? Sure I insist, else no deal. 
Well, I'll have to talk to my husband about it. He'll be coming back early next week. Fine. Married six years, huh? That makes you pretty young when you were peddling real estate. 18 to 22. My father was in it all his life. I loved it. I turned out to be his best salesman. Where was this? San Diego. Oh. Big naval base there, isn't it? Huge. The salesmanship. Some of us have it, some don't. Aren't you getting a little bit fresh, Mr. Shaw? Yeah, maybe I am. Well, Mrs. Summon, I'll think it over. How about tomorrow? Shall I stop by about the same time? Sure, business here. Yeah, I like your office. Don't be ridiculous, Mr. Shaw. I wish I thought I was being ridiculous, Mrs. Hellman. Hello, Pearson. Mrs. Hillman phoned a little while ago. Uh, her husband's up in San Francisco and uh, said she was flying up there tomorrow afternoon to talk to him about that 30,000 in debts. She wants to see you Friday night. Night, huh? Uh, that's what she said. What did you think of her? She likes you. I think you'll make a great team. Thanks, Coach. I'm decent. Come in. My, you want to sleep at night instead of in the daytime. Be much better for your health, too. Yeah, I'll try to remember that, Mrs. Pilch. My, look at this bed. Oh, say, uh, Mrs. Hillman called you. She didn't want to talk to you on the phone, but she said to meet her here at nine. Real sweet, nice woman, I thought. I think you can always kind of tell, don't you? She sounded so refined. Yeah. Hi again. Don't just stand there. You've seen girls before. Is that what you are? I hope you didn't mind coming here. This apartment belongs to a friend of mine. She's in Palm Springs. I uh, promised I'd take care of her cats for her. Oh, that's OK. I like cats. It's nice and quiet here, and we can be all alone and talk without being interrupted by the telephone and visitors you know. Mm, that's swell. I even made the hors d'oeuvres. Of course, they're not as good as Mabel's. Your maids? Yes. You mean you didn't bring her? Well, of course not. I'm crushed. Well, try one. Not bad. What is it, rattlesnake meat? <laughs> Don't be silly. Oh, I suppose Mr. Pearson told you that I flew up to San Francisco to see my husband? Sure. I told my husband that I liked you very much. Oh, you probably want a drink. Oh, would you rather have a cup of coffee? Whatever you say. I'm ready for anything. Well, I 
sort of feel like a drink myself. I think this calls for a celebration. Will you mix them? I like scotch, light with lots of water. Uh oh, I forgot the tray. Watch out for the cats. Do you think this calls for a celebration? What does exactly? My husband has agreed to pay off the $30,000 in debt. That's what does exactly. Isn't that wonderful? Sounds pretty good. Aren't you surprised? I just fell down, stiff with shock. <laughs> I thought this was the only thing that was holding up the deal. You mean, as far as you're concerned, the deal's settled? Well, you certainly gave me the impression that this would settle it. You should honk about giving impressions. When do the debts get paid off, providing I agree? Well, not all at once, of course. We'll make an allotment for them and pay them off as we go along. That's fair enough, isn't it? Out of those $50,000 chunks? Yes. You can't expect my husband to put up any more money, can you? I'll buy that. To our partnership. Starting tonight. Mmm. I feel just luscious. Oh, uh, how much insurance do you have? Insurance? Yes, you know, life insurance. Carried by the corporation to protect all the money that's invested in it. Just in case. $35,000 last time I looked. Oh. Well, that isn't very much. It's 35000 more than I carry in myself. My husband was very specific about the insurance. Key man insurance, it's called. Key man? Uh, yes. Uh, for instance, I couldn't have the corporation take it out on me because, well, anybody can sell real estate. In San Diego? Oh, stop it. What I mean is it would be perfectly simple to find another real estate man to take my place. But nobody could take my place, huh? Oh, no, and not build those nice little houses as cheaply as you can. You designed them. You know, the material that goes into them. Where to get the material, what kind of labor to hire. Well, they're just like your babies. You seem to know a good bit about it. Well, my husband explained it to me very carefully. Goodness, that's all we do. Talk business. You mean that's all you ever do? More or less. Then you like that? I don't mind. Well, if you ever want to get away from the office water cooler and live it up a little, maybe a little music will get this party airborne. Mr. Shaw. Now, that sounds formal. Edward, how much insurance do you think we ought to have? How much does your husband think we ought to have? Quite a lot. After all, it's a huge investment. He was talking about 300,000. Oh, but I insisted the premiums would be too high. He agreed to take off 50,000. Leaving a quarter of a million? Yes. That's not too high, is it? No. Not if you're a mountain goat. I'll see you around. Where, where are you going? Look, Mrs. Hillman, I'm wise. Now that I'm hooked, I'm supposed to agree to anything, isn't that it? Hooked? First the pool and the swimming suit. Now this teepee and the war paint. This is one scalp you don't get. You can't talk to me like that. I'm doing it. And here's another thing. Nobody's getting rich when I shove. Not even if they give me that laugh. Don't touch me, you're horrible. You're wonderful. But not to do business with. Get out of this apartment. That's me you hear whistling in the street.
I can see you too, Edward. It was a terrible thing to accuse me of. I know. It doesn't have to be a quarter of a million dollars. I know that too. Two hundred thousand? A hundred and fifty. A hundred and fifty? Uh-huh. My husband will never agree to it. Who cares what your husband agrees to? Don't. Please don't. Two hundred thousand? Please, darling. One hundred and seventy-five. see again. How about this morning at 10 o'clock? Where? Pearson's office. Why? Meet my husband. He's coming in on the early plane. Now, let's be sensible, Mr. Shaw. If you were a banker, I came to you and asked for a loan of $500,000. Would you allow me to put up 175,000 security? That's a different thing. Yes, Mr. it's a different proposition, I know, but the principle is the same. But, Mr. Now, let me finish, Mr. Shaw. I don't ask, and I don't expect, to get full security the way a bank does. But I do ask and expect 50%. Yeah, but do you get it? <laughs> uh, I see your point. That's a good question. <laughs> You've done business before, my boy. <laughs> do I get it? <laughs> All right, Pearson, what do I sign? Right here, sir. Top line. Hello. Miss Adams said I should come right in. I'm sorry I'm late, but Madge and I have been shopping. Mr. Shaw, I want you to meet her. Come on in, Madge. This is Mr. Pearson, whom I don't believe you've met, and Mr. Shaw, this is my kid sister, Madge. How do you do? Hello, Mr. Hillman. I'm glad to see you, Madge. Nice to meet you, Miss... Uh... Neelan. <laughs> Doris always forget. <laughs> Hello. You run along now, honey. I'll catch up with you in about an hour. Glad to have met you, Mr. Shaw. Same here. Doris tells me you design houses and they're wonderful. You see, I studied commercial art and I think design... Uh, not just now, dear. We're in the middle of a business conference. Oh, sorry, Doris. I didn't know you asked me in just as a magnanimous gesture. Now, Madge... You know, one of these days when you introduce me to somebody, I'm actually going to finish a sentence about myself. That is, if you happen to lose your voice. No, you're not going to stand me up at Orbach's, are you? Stand you up? I'd rather strangle myself. Dory, she gets more like you every day. Now, where's that line, Pearson? Right there on the top, sir. You mean we're signing now? Yes, we'd have signed long ago if you hadn't spent so much time shopping. Four closets full of clothes and all she ever wears is a bathing suit. Here. Well, come on, Dory. Shaw and I ought to be down at the insurance company now. What's the matter with you? Give Shaw the pen. <laughs> Women. I guess Madge really did upset her.
I, I bet you're surprised. I'm Madge, remember? Oh, sure, I remember. Doris said she'd be about an hour late. She asked me to meet you and said for us to go ahead and eat. You two have made up, huh? A waiter. Two, please. You didn't think I was really sore, did you? Doris and I go on like that all the time. May I call you Edward? Sure. I'll have the beef stew and coffee. I'll just have a chef salad and coffee later. Doris is such a wonderful girl. Of course, she treats me like a baby. How old are you? Almost 22. I have my own studio apartment. Nice. I'm not as strong as Doris. I guess that's the trouble. You see, I'm sensitive, so she dominates me. Even when she had a tragedy, a real tragedy in her first marriage. Didn't bother a bit. What first marriage? Oh, I thought you knew. Oh, she'll brain me if she finds out I told you. But I just detest people who start to tell you something and then don't finish it, don't you? I think it's just cruel. Yeah. Well, Doris married a man named Arleski when she was 18. She met him down in Mexico when he was on a toot. What happened? Did he toot too much? You're laughing at me. That's an old word my mother used to use. No, he was killed. A real tragedy. One night he fell asleep while he was driving and drove off a bridge. Up in Wyoming somewhere. That didn't bother Doris. Well, she up married Hillman. <laughs> Mr. Hillman was Narleski's business partner. That's how Mr. Hillman happened to come into all the money. The insurance, I mean. Life insurance? Yes. Oh, a fabulous amount. Way up in the hundreds of thousands. Darleski was a uranium expert or something, and... What's the matter? Pay the check, William. Uh, Mr. Shaw? What did I do? Did I say something that offended you? No, no, no. You were fine. Tell me something. You got a cousin that lives in Pasadena? Oh, I don't think so. Cousin Evie lives in one of my houses. No, Cousin Evie lives in Portland. Thanks. Oh, Mr. Shaw, I mean, Edward, will you do me a favor and not tell Doris I was here? She just asked me to phone you and tell you she couldn't make it, and I... I couldn't find anybody to send for it, Mr. Shaw, so I went out for it myself. Anything else right now? How much money has Hillman given us so far? Ten to start with. Three checks for two, five. Seventeen, five. When's the rest of the first 50,000 due? You want some of this paint? No, thanks. It's due June 1st, if you haven't changed it. And today's May 22nd, huh? Yes. Nine days. Has something happened, Mr. Shaw? No, not yet. But you can count on it in the next nine days. Tell me, Mary, do I strike you as a suspicious type character? I mean, say, a, a, a guy who wouldn't trust his own mother with a skate key? No, Mr. Shaw. Not just saying that because you work here. Oh, come on, Mary, be frank. Have some guts. You'll lose your job, but have some guts. me. Suspicious character. I peep over my accountant's shoulder when he's signing the checks. Cop gives me a ticket and I wonder if he's really a cop. I'm lock the office every time I go out in the hall because of this. Shaw Incorporated. Just a moment, please. It's Mrs. Hillman. Hi. Darling, I'm sorry I couldn't make lunch. Did Madge phone you? Yeah. I was up on the hill looking at some property and there was no phone. Madge wanted the car, so I let her have it. Darling, the property's just what we want. Really? Put those darling houses on it and they're going to sell for a fortune. You just got to see it. Sorry Mary was in here. You mean right now? Well, of course. I'm in a gas station on the corner of Barham and Cuenga. You can make it in 15 minutes. I'm tied up now. Darling, what's the matter? You just heard it. I'm tied up. 
But at least we could look at the property together and we'll spend a little time. Uh, maybe I'm sick of sneaking around when he's home. Getting five minutes here with you, ten minutes there. But he's going away soon, darling. Listen, you've got to see the property tomorrow morning or we may lose it. Shall I pick you up? Yeah, here. Early. Bye. Bye. She used Gary Easley. The brakes just slipped, that's all. Brakes slipped? I'll get Mr. Hanauer. He promised to show us around. Can I help you? Uh, this is going to sound funny. Go ahead, maybe it won't. Somebody's trying to kill me. You know who, or are you just guessing? Look, I didn't come in here to cut up. The 53 Pontiac coffee, blue convertible. Hey, maybe you didn't hear me. I heard you. Fred, you got an engine number? No. Look, if you know who, maybe we can help you. If you don't, what can we do? If you're still trying to cut up... Look, how many people do you think come in here just like you, who say somebody's trying to kill them? How many? How would I know? Four or five a week. Sometimes three in one day. Not one of them that I know of has been hurt yet. Fred, dig out that Collins file for me, will you? Think it over for a minute. See if you got anything real to go on. Lieutenant Hoff will talk to you. Uh uh. That door. Where did this death in Wyoming take place? I don't know. You see, Shaw? Nothing. All you've got to go on is the word of a 21-year-old girl. And this car thing. Maybe Mrs. Hillman wasn't lying. Maybe the brakes were slipping. Maybe I'm going nuts, too. Maybe this isn't even a police station. Shaw? Look. You understand our position, don't you? I mean, we get this kind of thing shoved in our faces all day long. Most of them are crackpots. You know why I talk to you? Tell me, Uncle Jack. All right, let's simmer down, partner. I talk to you because you don't look like a crackpot. You don't sound like a crackpot, that's why. But I'm acting like one. I didn't say that. But that's the idea. All right. We'll look up Hillman for you. How's that? Now, where can I get in touch with you? Wrap twice in my coffin. A stumble bum with a champ's mouth, huh? Catch him, get his address. Right. And write out a squeal on him. Okay. <laughs> Nothing wrong with these brakes. Stops on a dime, stays there. Thanks. You want to try it yourself? No, no, no. I told the owner I'd bring it right back. After the test. Oh, there you are. Mr. 
Mrs. Hillman's been trying to reach you all afternoon. She wants you to meet her at Mountain Lodge tomorrow night to close the deal on that lake property. Do you want me for anything else? No, thanks, Mary. Good night. Good night. I'd find you here. I just had to see you. I bet you think I'm awful. Why would I think that? I lied to you. An outright lie about Doris being late for lunch that day. You probably think all the rest were lies, too. Were they? Of course not. But you couldn't tell whether I was a big liar or not. What are you typing? Typing? Yes. I heard you as I was coming in. Peck and pray. Oh, it's just uh, an office memo. A likely story. Groucho says that on TV all the time. If it's just an office memo, why are you hiding it? I'm not hiding it. Let's get out of here. Come on. I bet it's a love letter. I just love to read other people's love letters, don't you? You see, you were hiding it. I wasn't going to read it, I just wanted to find out. Funny thing. I believe you. How about a nice, big, juicy steak? Oh, I'd love it. Oh, I just remembered something. What? I just had a nice, big, thick, juicy steak. <laughs> <laughs> this one. I'd like to, but I better take off. It's almost three. Oh, it is? Well, first it's nine, and then whoosh, it's almost three. Where does the time go? Yeah. I wonder. You better go. I'll get your coat.
sore about something? Unhappy? <laughs> Just plain miserable, huh? They have to go up the mountains and meet Doris tomorrow, and close the deal. I'll call you as soon as I get back. So good to see you. Where'd you get the car? Rented it. We're going to have dinner with Collins tonight. We should be able to close the deal. I was going to leave you a note. Yeah? I tore it up. I thought it'd be more fun to tell you myself. I've got a surprise for you, too. I bet. Just great, you know. I'm so proud of you. We've got our first piece of property, and it's just at your price, too. Hey, watch it, will you? Where are we going? That's the surprise. To our cabin. What do you mean, our cabin? Well, mine and my husband's. It's way up on the top of the mountain, the very top. You can look down and see for miles and miles. Well, that's great. Let's go. Something the matter? Have you ever been up here? Sure, lots of times. But for goodness sakes, why? I just wondered. I bet she comes running to you with her troubles all the time. <laughs> Not her. She's too independent and stubborn. Come on. How do you like it? Not bad. Scary, isn't it? We used to have a porch built out over there, but nobody felt comfortable on it. One of these days, I'm going to put a great big picture window there. What's the matter? I want to show you something else. No, no thanks. Uh, I'm quite comfortable right here. What's been the matter with you lately, Edward? How lately? I'm serious, darling. Nothing that I know of. Why? You've been avoiding me. Even when I see you, it's not the same. Well, that's logical. Nothing stands still, Doris. But I don't want it to stand still. I want it to grow I, so that nothing can stop it. Not you, nor me, nor anybody. But most of all, not you, nor me. I thought you might like some coffee. It's good on a cold night like this. I brought some cookies, too. What are you doing here? I was worried about you, Dolly. I wanted to see how you and Shaw were getting along. Black or white? You got any brandy? Not here. Cream will do. Enough? That's fine. You forgot the sugar. Oh, so I did. <laughs> I forgot. Oh, Doris. Of course, it should be ladies first. I forget whether you take cream or sugar. It's been so long since we've had breakfast together. Doris. We're all civilized people. Sit down. We might as well be comfortable. <laughs> 
What do you want, Gus? An understanding. If this partnership is to continue, it is to be confined to business hours. That's fairly clear, isn't it? Mm, pretty clear. Wouldn't you say it was, Doris? Please, Edward, will you shut up? Yep. It was pretty clear to her. Well, I must be running. Don't finish your coffee. Have a cookie. No, thanks. Oh, Mr. Hillman. It was nice of you to come all the way up here just to tell me not to work overtime. Good night. How did you know I'd come here? Your attitude. What's that got to do with it? You couldn't wait to get Shaw alone. This was the best place. You're drunk. Uh, sure, I've had one or two. It's a long ride up that mountain. It's a long ride down, too. <laughs> That's better. I can stay here and have some fun with Gus, huh? Now, just what was it I was supposed to have put in the coffee, Mr. Norman? Some kind of a drug, according to Mr. Shaw. That would be funny if it wasn't so serious. Do you realize, Mr. Shaw, that you're accusing me of attempted murder? I sure do, and it's not hard. I'm perfectly willing to do anything I can to clear this matter up, not only for my own reputation, but for Mr. Shaw's peace of mind. I don't want anybody laying awake at night wondering if I'm going to murder them. So if it'll help by canceling the policy, I'll be glad to do it, even though it leaves me out on a limb with a huge investment. The policy is non-cancelable. Yes, I know that. But if the president of your company is willing to cut corners and make an exception in this case, I will cancel the policy. 
And I'm sure that mostly all companies are willing to cut corners at one time or another. Is that fair enough? Sounds fine to me. Cancel it today? Right now. I'm satisfied. Well, that's fine. You know, Mr. Norman, what's the matter with Mr. Shaw? He suffers from a guilt complex. Oh? He's in love with my wife. Perhaps I should refresh my psychology, Mr. Hillman, but what's that got to do with it, if you get what I mean? He's afraid I might kill him. So he cooked up this story to get your protection. When he and my wife arrived at the cabin, the last person in the world they expected to find there was me. Am I clear? Did you and Mrs. Hillman expect to find Mr. Hillman at the cabin? They thought I was safe and sound in Los Angeles. I can prove it. Is that true? Yeah. I'm sorry, Mr. Shaw, but the policy is non-cancellable, and I see no reason to discuss it any further. say, and then he packed in a hurry, I tell you. Yes, packed. Well, he was... Miss Hillman? Huh? Well... Hmm. I've called every place, Mrs. Hillman. It's fantastic. He seems to have disappeared completely. Today's the 27th, isn't it? Yes. And he took his thousand-dollar bill? Well, I imagine so. When I came back from lunch, he was gone, and so was the bill. You're late. What on earth's the matter with you? Oh, I had a little scare, that's all. I'm all right. You got my message, huh? Yes. I was so glad to hear from you. The maid let me in. Was that all right? Sure. I guess you think I've slipped a cog or two, huh? No. 
Why, they sure got themselves a beautiful setup. Insurance policy I can't shake. Police think I'm psycho. It gets to you after a while. Just not knowing where it's coming from, or when, or what, or how. Well, I'm taking that thousand dollar bill and coming up on the other side of the world. No shakes, no cold sweat, and no tramps. That's why I wanted to see you, to say goodbye. Why haven't you left before? Is it because you're in love with the tramp? I'm sorry I said that. After all, she is your sister. If you're not in love with her, are you in love with somebody else? No. Not even a little bit? Maybe. A little bit. And that's why you haven't left? Maybe. Maybe staying is like the thousand dollar bill. Gives me something to cling to. Pretty good, doesn't it? Not to me. I think putting that bill in a frame was sheer sentimental drivel. Yeah, that's cute. Let's hear it again. Here you are about to throw away your whole life by going off to the Australian bush or someplace. And you're going to use that, that thing to do it. Well, what's wrong with that? Can't you use all that money here to fight back at Doris and Mr. Hillman? All I'm fighting here is my nerves. I'm only 21. And I know when you're 21, you, you think you know more than anybody else in the world. But I think I know what's wrong with you. You won't stop thinking about it, really, until you stop running from it. Or I could stay here and keep on being a sitting duck. Well, not if you do something about it. Go see Doris. You can handle her. You mean if I went to her, went back to her, she'd turn on Hellman? If there was a, you know, a, a showdown between you and Doris and Mr. Hillman, she would. And then the whole plot would come out. And if Doris turned against him, Mr. Hillman wouldn't dare do anything. Just how do we get the showdown? Well, if Hillman sees you and Doris together... Where? On a trip or someplace? Well, why not a trip? Las Vegas or any place. Using what for money? I'll take you to him. Why did he send me this? He said with you money talked. Really? He also said that you could choose the place and, and spend the money any way you liked. Providing, of course, that he spends it with you. But why? Didn't he think I was trying to do away with him? Oh, of course not. He never suspected you at all. He thought Mr. Hillman was trying to. But why didn't he call me direct? Well, I'll have to run along. I'll be late for class. Doris, will you run me down to school? Uh, honey, I can't. I'm late. Here, take a cab and run. Gus is in Chicago, and I've got to call Pearson.
Las Vegas, did it move? What? We're headed toward Big Bear country. Come on, let's make the light. <laughs> What's bothering you? Now or then? Then. Las Vegas. You're about 35 miles wrong. I must have taken the wrong road. Ask me what's bothering me now. Why ask what I already know? Your cabin, huh? Yes. No roulette, no dice, no big flowing dresses? No. No husband? Gus is in Chicago, you know that. I only know what you tell me. And? Tell me more. Just tonight, Edward. Up there, it's like being on top of the world. We could go to Vegas tomorrow. On drive. Doris went away together, and we let Hillman know they were away together, well, that would do it. Do what? Well, play Hillman and Doris against each other. I know Doris, and if she got mad enough at Hillman, she'd tell Edward everything. Split and conquer, huh? Yes. So? Now Shaw is in Las Vegas. Only Mrs. Hillman knows that he suspects her, so she'll know he's trying to trick her. Shaw hasn't shown up at the sands yet, Hoffy. Neither is that Hillman dame. Sorry, miss. What about Mr. Hillman? Well, he checked out early this morning. Was asking the airlines about getting him to Big Bear. Big Bear? Not Vegas? He and Doris have a cabin up near there. Oh, yeah, this. The life insurance people just called it to me over the phone. Miles Norman's office. From Laramie, Wyoming. Now, Lesky fell asleep and drove off bridge 12 miles north of here. Reopening case to confirm suspicion of sleeping pills. Details later. Beautiful, isn't it? I might even ask you to drink it out of my slipper. Champagne's for good things. Here's to fun. And to love. What's the matter, Edward? What's wrong? You're not going to spoil our little party? Our party was spoiled a long time ago. Happened to me like this since I was a kid. Something nice happens, and it always manages to get messed up. What's wrong, Edward? You've sneaked around too many corners, I guess. I just like to walk down the street once, in the sunlight. But we've had a wonderful time the past few weeks. The best I've ever had, something that could go on forever. You feel that way just as I do. You know, it's a shame. We'd be awful good together. If only I could trust you. Is trust something that you wrap up in a package and give to the person you love? Or is it in my eyes, in my heart? Read my heart, Edward. I'm trying, Doris, but there are things. Things like, why did we come to the cabin? Edward, listen, I was just trying to test you. I wanted to get rid of Gus so that we could be alone, so that I could make you love me like I love you. You're lying, Doris. I'm not lying, Edward. Lies, all of it lies. Edward, 
I love you. This is all I've ever wanted. Just you, Edward. We could stay here forever. Yes, forever, darling. What about Gus? Gus? Edward, we've got to get away from here quickly. Why? Gus, he's coming here. He'll be here any time. Tonight? Yes. That it was going to be tonight. Yes, but it's all changed now. Please, Edward, let's go. I am going. Alone. Oh, but Edward, you love me. You told me. Tell me, me darling. You love how me. does it feel to kiss someone you're planning to kill? Are the lips sweeter when you know you'll be the last to kiss them? Arlie! No, Edward. Tell the truth for a change. Oh. Tell me how much you love me when your husband fed me dope. Do you love me more than you love Narleski? Tell me, do you? Please, please. Come Edward. on, talk. Tell me how much our love will grow and grow. Keep telling me until you kill me. You're not fit to live. Oh, no, Edward. Edward, Edward, where are you going? I'm getting out of here while I'm still alive. Edward, please don't leave me. Edward. Put down that gun. I didn't mean to, but you were leaving me, Edward. I'm sorry. Please forgive me, darling. What's happened here? Is he dead? No, he's alive. You idiot. Why did you shoot him? You spoiled everything. Oh, Edward, darling. Pull yourself together. Stop that. But I've shot him. Can't you see? You loved him a great deal, didn't you? Does anybody know you brought him here? Good, that's perfect. A lover's rendezvous. Ending in a suicide. A double suicide. What? You're a clever girl, Dory. You know that a woman might kill her lover when he threatens to leave her and then follow him herself later? Gus, you're horrible. Yeah. We're a pair, aren't we, Dory? It's too bad you couldn't have remembered that. Let me give you a hand. Dribble. Who needs dribble anymore? Get his head.
Want to tell me what you're thinking? Eyes and moves. Oh, what's that? Feelings you get. But just from certain people. Oh. Yeah. Doris was practical. She liked men, she liked money. No nonsense. I never met anybody like her. Things may be a lot different than you think. Go to sleep.